Mr. Zheng, Chairman of the Hong Kong GBC, Donald, and other friends in the construction industry. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me to represent Urban Renewal to speak on this forward-looking issue in Hong Kong sustainability. Hong Kong is a modern city with fantastic cityscape. There are plenty of brand new developments as well as historical buildings around us. As times goes by, regeneration of this aged building is required. Should we demolish it and rebuild it? Or they should be preserved and revitalized. The urban renewal strategy promulgated by the government in 2011 tasks URA to pursue the following objectives relating to sustainability and preservation. Promoting sustainability development in the urban areas, preserving buildings, sites, structures of historical, cultural, or architectural value, and preserving as far as practical the local characteristics. To respond to the above objectives, the URA have endeavored to pursue redevelopment conservation projects. We take Wan Chai as an example. The four pinpoints in the map showcase some of the projects. Wo Cheng Palm Shop, Wan Chai Market, Li Tung Street, and our preservation of the street alignment and reading characters in the so-called reading cities. These well illustrate that new redevelopment can be blended in with the historical building to preserve cultural characters on the one hand while injecting vibrancy in the old district on the other. Apart from the redevelopment conservation approach, we have cases to preserve isolated buildings and street blocks. For example, 7 Maori Street, Wan Chai Western Market, 618 Shanghai Street, and Central Market. I will share with you on the details of the last two projects later. However, I would say that it was a tough task to carry out preservation in densely populated city in Hong Kong. On one hand, the scality of the local land in Hong Kong calls for redevelopment. That makes better utilization of our precious land resources to meet the pervading and the future needs of the city. On the other hand, the society appeals for retaining local characteristics of the city. People usually prefer to proceed with redevelopment over preservation, mainly because Preservation, you will lose your development rights. Retrofitting and maintenance works are often very costly. At the same time, you need to face many obstacles in obtaining compliance with the prevailing building regulations. That may outweigh the merit of preservation on cultural and historical significance, sustainability, and reduction of carbon footprint in urban regeneration. Other than the need of taking out the reasons why we should preserve the aged buildings, we have to identify what has to be preserved. For the hardware, which part of the architectural features have to be retained? It may range from a unique building components, for instance, some of the character defining elements, stone, or we go for a whole isolated building structure, a street block. Besides of this hardware, some may keep the essence of a heritage because of the soul. For example, historical memories, which Bruce Lee, the famous Bruce Lee, the cultural preservation, the bamboo theatre, the local characteristics and the traditional business. If we are able to sort out the reason why and the extent of what to be preserved, 
we have to arrive at a sustainable solution on how to preserve it. To transform a historical building, we need to first, you have to own or obtain the ownership through acquisitions. You need to overcome the hurdle in conforming all the current pervading statutory requirements. You need to observe the construction standard and safety for sustainable design. You need to observe the operation and maintenance issues for adaptable use for these aged buildings. I will show you how we go through the above challenges in two of our preservation projects. The first one, 618 Shanghai Street, 618 Shanghai Gai. These pictures show the building cluster in the old form before our restoration works in Shanghai Street. We identify the heritage value of existing P wall buildings in various areas. The characters define the elements, including the building facade, granite columns, external brick walls, and mostly the street atmosphere, as well as the veranda, the arch brick walls, the timber windows, chinese, and the most important, I think, is the paint shop names. We commenced the project in 2008 and conduct a series of public engagement and consultation exercises to solicit public views on the appropriate adaptable reuse of these buildings. During the planning stage, we've drawn up seven options for us, from pure preservation to complete redevelopment. Among all options, we pick, we rebuild the four post-war portions to include the EMM, the installation lift, MOE, toilets, etc., etc. To retain the existing facade, we also need to have a power foundation to strengthen the overall structural durability and building safety. Through these enhancement works, you can see the build form, including the color of the external paint of the historical building, has been largely preserved and upgraded. Well, this is not only a merely a preservation project. In fact, we try to showcase this project can be done in a sustainable and innovative way. For example, we put silo irrigation system, solar pavers, solar nice, rainwater recycling, DC fan coil, to reduce energy and water consumption. We also adopt smart technology to enrich the vibrancy of the building, such as such nest leaf sensor, robot receptionist, other sustainable measures, including greening, wooden decks, LED lighting, water saving, automatic food set, are used to lower the carbon emission and greenhouse effect. And this project will obtain the Hong Kong GBC BIMPAS, the highest platinum rating in 2020. Apart from the above environmentally friendly provisions, we also apply the new technologies, that is the building information modeling in this project as a tool in enhancing the design coordination, crash prevention, and we also combine other smart technology like the, information, the IoT, CCTV, cloud technology, so that we can build a digital twins for the operation and facility management. These paperless integrated automated tools greatly optimize the performance of this building in a long-term manner. As I mentioned before, the show is always essence of a her heritage. The invaluable stories of the Yabat and the retained architectural features are the historical and cultural heritage. To pass this on to the community, we implement an interactive approach in presenting the context and the evolution of the street 
to the communities, a self-guard tool, Voyage of Time at Shanghai Gai, has been developed using multimedia technology and creative presentation to guide the visitors and customers. Economic consideration is another crucial factor for successful adaptive reuse. The revitalized venue has a total retail area of about 3,700 meters square. We put in a lot of specialty shops, characters from the district, restaurant, shop selling, homeware. These retail business serve the needs of the local people and outside visitors. While in line with the objective of promoting social sustainability, we also engage a Dignity Kitchen, a Singapore restaurant operated by a social enterprise, to run our second floor, the whole floor of the premises. Dignity Kitchen aims at restoring dignity to the differently able and disadvantaged. The organization offers professional value-added training to these individuals, enhancing their chances to secure long-term employment in the community. To me, a socially sustainable heritage building must also be well accepted by the community, attracting members of the public to appreciate, experience, and use the relevant structures, space, and facilities. Therefore, a public community space at ground floor, instead I put it shops, over 1,000 square foot, with free seating and artworks holograms to make the venue as a place-making area. Now I'll move on another example, Central Market. We just have this soft opening last year. I think the Central Market is older than all of us. It has been standing in the heart of the Central for many decades serving as a strategic connection point, breathing space and ventilation corridor in the central. These great three historical building, an example of streamlined modern style of that year, characters by the building's slim horizontal lines and functionalism. In the 2009 policy address, the then chief executive announced the removal of the central market from the lease of the land sale by application, and URA was tasked to conserve and revitalize the market as part of the Conservation Central Initiative. Extensive public engagement exercise have been conducted. We adopt the guiding operation themes of approachable, energetic, and griefers of Chan Dong Yong. And for the branding and operation details, I will leave it to Donald <laughs> in his presentation. My part will only highlight the major consideration in the planning and the restoration stages. To address and the innovative use of space expressed by the community, the community area in the central market, including 1,000 meters square of public open space at the atrium, and the entrance paths that serve as a multi-function space to cater for the needs from different walks of life, open plan design, and also adopted to provide flexibility and efficient use of the full area. Now we identify the five major characters defining elements in the building. The atrium, the facade, grand staircase, column grids, and market stores. Along the revitalization work in the market, we make a step further to widen the footpath preservation causing in the surrounding areas. Greening work such as tree planting have been proposed to improve the walkability and provide more comfortable pedestrian experience. Now, given the state of the building deliberation in the central market, when it's handover from to us, extensive building rehabilitation works need to be carried out to improve 
the physical conditions of the building to extend the usable lifespan. We apply the fiber reinforced polymer composite, the FRP, to repair the reinforced concrete structures. We also to improve the accessibility and connectivity by means of escalator system and a 24-hour passageway. There's also a new toilet with smart features. Now I talk too much, time is maybe up. All in all, we try our best to preserve the buildings. However, we do evaluate the cost from a different perspective. Preservation is a rather expensive option to implement due to its high acquisitions, restoration costs, and the loss of the development rights for a preserved building. Incentive, should we give incentive to give the PyFIC developers for taking more active participation in these projects? Can we transfer the unused development rights from the potential from a heritage site to an adjoining or nearby site to make it financially viable? By transferring the unused port ratio from a heritage site to another site with greater redevelopment potential, the unused development rights in the former can be turned into a valuable productive asset, thereby attracting more participation. Urban renewal has to serve the development need of a city for many decades to come. A forward-looking approach is required to generate long-lasting benefits in support of sustainable development. Different parks in the old area require different regeneration strategies. It may involve redevelopment, rehabilitation, revitalization, and preservation. Redevelopment and preservation are not contradicted to each other. A balanced approach should be formulated to the benefits of the whole society and even intergenerations. Thank you.